find a bumpy track, add some tough motorbikes and riders, and mix well. The result? A scramble. A sport which today attracts thousands of followers and is producing British scrambling machines which are being exported all over the world. This firm in Essex, which now employs 150 people, produced its first scrambling motorbike in 1953, when the sport was beginning really to get onto its feet. Their 250cc model was a winner. It was tough, maneuverable, and fast on the scrambling track, and orders for it soon poured in. Today, in a highly competitive market, more than 10,000 specialist motorcycles have been sold by this one small firm, 75% of them for export. America is its largest overseas customer. The secret of such success in a highly specialized field has obviously been attention to detail. If the smallest part for the machine could not be obtained exactly as required, the company turned to and made it themselves. Today, virtually everything that goes into the machine is made on the spot. With worldwide success for its 250cc model, the company is now working on a new, more powerful scrambling bike. This 360cc model, being put through some rigorous testing on a nearby track, has taken 18 months to develop. Worldwide markets are wide open for this size of competition motorbike if it proves to be another winner. The job of the company's test riders is to try to find something wrong with these power-packed flyers. After the new models have been given a thorough thrashing, the company's technical men are on hand for on-the-spot checks. And on hand, too, is the man who has to sell this new machine throughout the world, Mr. Preston Cobb, sales director of the company. Paralyzed since birth, Mr. Cobb travels thousands of miles on business every year. He's driven most weekends to scrambles where company machines are competing. And with Two assistants, he travels the world selling this company's tough little British-made scramblers. Among the many other high-performance scrambling machines made in Britain are do-it-yourself scramblers, which are supplied in kit form. This latest 360cc model, produced by a Birmingham firm, is being assembled by an up-and-coming young Midland rider, 19-year-old Dave Smith and his pal. Home assembly means a saving of one-fifth on the price of the machine. And for anyone with a good working knowledge of motorcycles, the job can be completed in three hours. Dave Smith, who's been scrambling for just over two years, rode this bike the next day against some of the hottest competition. Eight-year-old Robin Gersden of West London should be a future threat to the world's top scramblers. Here he is after riding for only four months on a miniature 50cc scrambling bike built by his father, who's a motor mechanic and trials rider. Dad gives him some advice on negotiating mud, and he's away again. This tiny machine has three gears and a top speed of 35 miles per hour. Ideal for riding the bumps of an old gravel pit nearby the Gersden's home. The question of training facilities for young scrambling enthusiasts is a major problem in Britain for this rapidly expanding international sport. A few motorcycle clubs who are lucky enough to have the use of some rough land organize practice meets. 
But apart from that, the only way a lad bitten with the scrambling bug can hope to reach competition standard is to ride his bike over any rough ground he can find. Some owners of sand and gravel pits, like this one in Essex, close their eyes, or ears, to this impromptu Sunday morning scrambling practice. Organized by local motorcycle clubs, scramble meetings are held throughout Britain during the summer with odd winter meetings. At the big meets, like this one at Shrewsbury, as many as 200 riders from every part of the country will be competing. With a national championship event attracting star riders, the crowds flock in to watch the tussles to come. A tussle not only of rival top riders, but of top makers of machines as well. For, like motorcycle and car racing, scrambling performances considerably affect the world sales of road machines nowadays. The Scrambler is basically a road machine developed for tougher work. Extra grip tires are fitted, lights are not. Jeff Smith, 1964 and 65 world champion is here. Also, Dave Bickers, 1966 British champion. It's going to be a rough ride, so scrambling gear is tough. And under international scrambling rules, only standard commercial fuel may be used. There are 30 of Britain's top riders in the lineup for the mass start. It's a 12 lap race, each lap one and a half miles of some of the toughest riding in Britain. Men and machines take a pounding as they hit the bumps. scream as they roar up the banks. Only course officials and mechanics may help riders in trouble. Having covered one lap with a flat tire, Jeff Smith and his mechanic fit another wheel and then he's off again. Those extra grip tires help to pull the bikes up the hills and over the top. With nearly 10,000 keen scrambling fans watching the race, each lap of the leaders is timed for official records. The riders are thinning out now, for no more than a half of the starters will complete this grueling test. rest of the field fight it out for a good place, all attention is now focused on whether champion Dave Vickers can hold the lead. No, he's overtaken on the 10th lap. And at the winning post this time, it's a local rider, Alan Clough, with Vickers second. But in the ingredients of a good scramble, there's no bickering. <laughs> 